Sonic is a household name only being rivaled by the likes of Mario, the greatest plumber to ever do it. Although, I'm a Luigi guy myself, but that's besides the point. Sonic is the second most popular gaming icon ever. And with the release of Sonic 3 and Knuckles this year, eh, see what I did there? And also Sonic X Shadows Generations coming out, I decided to do a retrospective on the 9 games that appeared in Generations, as well as Shadow the Hedgehog. And as you know, by clicking on this video, I'm taking down the wonderful Sonic 3 and Knuckles. No, I'm not going to feed these games separately. They were envisioned to be the same game, just like Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2. Due to time constraints and McDonald's, that could not happen. But this also brings up the question of which version I played. Well, with Sega being silent on any ports of this game outside of Origins due to issues I'll get to later, here I emulated the game. Although now looking back, I probably should have used Sonic 3 Angel Island Revisited, which is a fan port of the game for PC, and many consider it the definitive way to play. Although I haven't put my hands on it, so I will no longer be mentioning it. And with this being said, I want to fully preface that Sonic 3 Knuckles is a great game, but I do have issues with it that I never hear anyone else bring up. So with that being said, leave your guys' comments and thoughts down below because I do read each and every thought. And let's begin. One thing most people don't know about this third installment is that it was actually meant to first be an isometric game like 3D Blast. Due to constraints of time, this was not possible. And luckily, that was the case. Pegasonic's entire path could have been changed for the worse due to that game. But the development started at Sega Technical Institute just like Sonic 2. But due to, again, time issues for the McDonald's campaign, and also a size constraint because the game was getting pretty large, so yep, they had to split it up. Thus, they developed what they call lock-on technology. I just called it Fusion Dance to cap off the Dragon Ball references. And so, due to this, Sonic 3 was released in February of 1994, and Sonic and Knuckles was then released in October of that same year. Now, some of you may be wondering where Sonic CD fits in all of this. Well, it doesn't. Really, Sonic CD was its own thing for a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive add-on, and it was the one like 0.5, kind of like middle brother. So that's where Sega C that's where Sonic CD fits in all of it. But the absolute biggest question about this game's development is Michael Jackson's involvement. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This game had some Michael Jackson tunes. It's pretty crazy if you really think about it. First, the game got cut in half, and now Michael Jackson's making music. It's pretty crazy. And all of this because of the famously known game, Moonwalker. And also with Jackson being a lover of all things children, even their games, you know he had wanted to work on the soundtrack for this. And me personally, I do believe he at least ghost wrote some of these songs. The reason I say believe and not know is because after the child allegations put against the Prince of Pop at this time, Sega decided to back out and remove his name from all publications and other work. Now with the facts out of the way, let's get back to the size constraint I was talking about earlier. It is no secret that Sonic 3 and K is a big game. In fact, probably one of the biggest games in that generation with jaw-dropping sprite work even in today's time. This game was just enormous. It was even sporting a save feature, which was not mainstream at that time. But this game also wanted to be grander with its story too. The previously mentioned Sonic CD stepped up in the graphics department, but hadn't really done so in the story yet. Yes, there was Metal Sonic and Amy, but it was really just the first two games with time travel being a gimmick. And Sega Technical Institute wanted to do both, so they expanded the world greatly with the addition of Knuckles the Echidna, Angel Island, and also the Master Emerald. Gathered together with the normal Eggman shenanigans, this game was meant to be a crazy adventure. The story picks up right after the events of Sonic 2, with Sonic flying onto Angel Island as Super Sonic, with the stupid red echidna being there to politely ask you to run your pockets as he robs you. Then boom, you just go around Angel Island, trying to stop Eggman, with Knuckles being able to jump on a button just to ruin the mood every once in a while. This entire gameplay loop repeats until you reach launch base zone. Here we found out this guy is building a real death egg this time. Star Wars reference and all. There we take down the ship where it again falls onto Angel Island. No really. I guess in this world Eggman is responsible for the next great extinction. Oh wait, he is in Sonic Unleashed. So that's where Sonic 3 stories end, but fear not mortal in need of Sonic Media. For this is just the beginning of Sonic and Knuckles, where we pick up here on Mushroom Hill Zone. And oh wait, we do the exact same things until we reach Hidden Palace Zone, which is a nice throwback to Sonic 2. Here we fight Knuckles for the very first, final, and only time, with a really easy boss fight. Honestly, I think they could have done better here. They built Knuckles up the entire time for us to just insta-shield loop him over and over until he's dead. Mm, so eh. But after we beat his ass, Eggman pulls up and also politely asks for you to run your pockets as he steals the Master Emerald. 
And I haven't mentioned yet, but the Master Emerald is on par, if not exceeding the power of the Chaos Emerald. And also, it's what holds up Angel Island in the sky, and once it leaves, it drops down. He then flees away, just like he did earlier in the stupid-ass Marble Garden fight. Bzzz. Then, it's up to the gang to reach Eggman while climbing up Sky Sanctuary while encountering Mecha Sonic. And also, to be honest here, the spectacle is really cool, with them running up the spiral staircase so they can reach Death Egg Zone. It's really cool. And oh, I'm sorry, I guess I forgot to mention the entirely second Death Egg! So this man not only had the final zone, which was a starship in Sonic 2, but then he had a death egg in production, and in case that thing went away, he had a second death egg in production. Uh -huh. I'm starting to think that Eggman is really just a trust fund Nepple baby, because if he really wanted to, I guarantee he could have fixed all of the world's issues by now, but no. But either way, we chase him, kill a bunch of his robots, and then we chase him down to the ends of the earth. We kill his machine, and they go flying after him as supersonic. Or hypersonic if you got all the hyper emeralds, but your boy didn't, so press F for respect. Until we again beat Eggman, save the crystal, and bring Angel Island back to the sky where it belongs. Overall, it's a decent story, especially for the time period, but overall, I don't really care. I'm not going into Sonic for a gripping narrative, although Sky Sanctuary was a fantastic zone, slash act, slash set piece, slash story beat, slash all of it, right? So... With that being said, I really only want a Sonic gameplay to be good. But what I can talk about is the interconnectedness of it all. This game really feels like a true mission with the stakes being higher than ever with the world being at stake instead of just some animals in Green Hills. You can really feel the gravitas of the situation. But also, every environment is really diverse. From the first ice stage to finally a good water stage. Oh my god! And also a lava place. Hell, they even had two sets of similar levels and still made them distinct. Angel Island Zone really felt like a jungle and then a jungle set in Australia later in the level. But Mushroom Hill are the woods with a very different level designs. But other similar zones are the launch base and death egg zone. They're both industrial in setting, with Eggman being in control. But here they use background and colors to make them seem incomparable. And also, is that oil ocean in the background? I can't tell. So yes, these stages are very visually appealing. But yet another added bonus are the cutscenes or transitions from each stage to one another. Like Carnival Night, shooting you from a cannon to a snowboard, with the ending in you being piled under snow. Or even just a small fact that each act picks up nearly right where the last one ended off, with no cut to black. Really, just the presentation alone is some of the greatest the genre has ever seen. And if you haven't seen Sonic got a slight rework in the sprite design, I'm not the biggest fan of it, I think his eyes look a bit goofy, but that's just a slight nitpick. Sonic 3 Knuckles is definitely a third installment. In fact, I'd say it's a perfect example of how many game trilogies usually go. The first game lays a nice idea with rough edges. In this case, those edges were razor sharp, but hey, the core is still good. Then, the sequel smooths out the corners until it's very enjoyable. Maybe gets rid of a bad mechanic or two and replaces them. Then, with the third game, they just say, random bullshit, go! And see what sticks for later entries. Luckily, in this case, nearly everything landed, so let's start off with the changes. Mostly, this game doesn't change that much from Sonic 2. Really, just a special stage change, which was really good. In this case, there are multiple secret rings that bring you to special stages. And if you beat those special stages, then you get a Chaos Emerald, with you being able to become supersonic by the start of Hydrocity. Really neat. Sadly, I am not a veteran of this game, so I only got supersonic by the end of Carnival Night, and wasn't able to get hypersonic or knuckles. Or shit, I didn't even get super knuckles. And if you guys don't know, I did both a Knuckles and Sonic playthrough for this game, just so I got a good understanding of the game. And also, it's easy content, so if you guys haven't seen it, be sure to check it out. And also, talking about the changes, the special stages itself is completely different. In a good way this time too. Here is more of a puzzle and reaction game that consists of touching blue orbs to make them red orbs so you can get money or have blonde hair. Wait, that sounds a bit like Donald Trump in the States right now, doesn't it? But that's it. You can also jump, but outside of a super jump or a reverse orb, it's pretty simple. It's kind of like when your girlfriend's under period, just don't touch the red. And I really do enjoy these special stages. I found the moments where it's super high speed to be very exhilarating. But the real game changers are what they added. Sonic 3 and K added so much. So first thing, shields. The last two games had a bubble shield that protected you from your next hit. Here we have elemental shields that each give their own effect and passive ability. The literal bubble shield lets Sonic bounce on the ground giving him more airtime, and also the passive to not let Sonic drown and not get hit by certain projectiles. Then we have the fire one that gives Sonic an air dash and doesn't allow him to get hurt by flame attacks. And finally, we have the electricity shield that gives him a double jump and attracts nearby coins. Kind of like how children attract P. Diddy. All these are activated when pressing jump in the air. But what if you don't have a shield equipped? Well, for Sonic, he has an insta shield that gives him temporarily invincibility frames and also widens his hitbox. But with Tails and Knuckles, yes, you can place Tails and Knuckles in this game, it gives Knuckles his gliding ability that can then stick him to walls or Tails being able to fly. And with that being said, let's cover them real quick. In Sonic 3, you can play as Sonic and Tails. 
And in Sonic and Knuckles, you can play as Sonic and you guessed it, Knuckles. Well, if you do the fusion dance between the two cartridges, then you can also play it as all three of them simultaneously throughout both games. And Knuckles, he jumps shorter and can't use shields, but he can glide. Breakthrough blocks that Sonic can't, and also climbing allowing him an easier time on many levels, and with secrets. And then Tails being the easy mode of the game, with him you can fly using what he's most known for, his Tails. He is considered easy mode. Then Sonic is probably medium mode, and I'd say overall, especially in boss encounters, Knuckles is hard mode. Now, that is up for discussion if you guys want to comment down below. By the way, this is great. Allowing for three entirely different experiences using the same levels, just brilliant. But also, the way each character takes away from one another, giving pluses and minuses to each one, is just mwah. Beautiful. Another addition though is the Hyper Emeralds. After landing in Mushroom Hills, you can go into this cave that Knuckles comes from. If you got all the Chaos Emeralds, then they just become Hyper Emeralds. So you again have to do all the special stages just so you can unlock Hyper Sonic and Knuckles. This is really neat because you can choose your stages, which for one is cool. But also you later see this jewel room in Hidden Palace Zone. Because, well, this area is Hidden Palace Zone. And to my knowledge, the only difference is that Hyper Sonic has a double jump screen nuke ability, and that's it. But another stage inclusion are the bonus stages, with you being able to enter them just like how you would enter special stages in Sonic 2, with the different ring count dictating which stage you go into. There is a slot machine one, it's pretty boring, it brings back the slots from Sonic 2 and the physics of Sonic 1 special stages. Then there's my favorites, the gumball machine one where you just hit it until a ball drops so that you can get rings or whatnot. Then the spinning blue energy one, which is just a catapult for Sonic to keep going higher and higher. The slot machines one is whack and other two are decent. Also, oddly enough they even added a weird wall slash ceiling run ability that is really jank and sometimes works and other times... Uh... Anyway, you get my point by watching the screen. Overall, Sonic 3 and Knuckles adds a lot and changes some things. And luckily, most of it lands enhancing the experience. But my experience with this game, I feel is not like others because my enjoyment of each level is heavily linked to each stage. So let's just go through the stages I found to be specifically good or bad. Alright, I want to start the section on a high note, so let's go over the levels I found especially profound. Angel Island Zone is yet another green area with great level design. Again, just a fantastic level. Each character has a specific route that they can go, allowing for character expression. And they practically force you to get a secret ring which lets the player know of their existence. It's overall a really good level. But another really great level is Hydrocity. This is an actual good, no, great water stage in the Sonic game. Hydro City is chock full of high speed mechanics such as the Master Hand making its first appearance in the game, but also I bet all of you who first played this game as a kid had your jaws on the floor after watching Sonic run on water. But Aqua Village has one problem, the bosses are not meant for Knuckles. Now see how I dealt with this boss of Sonic? Well here as Knuckles is supposed to jump off the wall, hit it at a correct angle, and also make sure to wait to not get hit by the capsules, it's really frustrating to play Watertown's bosses at Knuckles. The second boss, don't even get me started. H2O Neighborhood's second boss is a chore. See what is supposed to happen when a bomb drops exploding water bouncing Sonic up so they can insta shield him? But again, Knuckles can't jump that high and also doesn't have the insta shield, so you think, huh, let me glide. But for some reason, the game bugs out and sends Knuckles into the sky and makes his glide super slow. This boss fight took me 20 minutes to beat. Although you can't see all of it, I cut it out on my playthrough, but hopefully you can take my word for it. But anyway, City Hydro is a great level, ruined by poorly designed bosses when playing as Knuckles. Ice Cap is no great level, and I'm not sorry. I think people don't tend to bring up the fact that the entirety of Act 1 is just spamming the swings and ice break puzzles, I guess you could call them. And then they just put springs around to halt your progress. But that's only when you're in the cave. When you're outside the cave, that's when the stage gets good for me. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Act 2 is maybe the best act in the game. It's a lot of speed, a lot of loop-de-loops, and a lot of openness. Just a lot of good things. So Act 1 is meh, but again, Act 2 is really good. But also, both bosses are probably the best in the games too. Act 1 is just a standard funky hitbox boss, and then Act 2 is pretty neat with testing your patience, so overall, it's a really good zone. Next up, Mushroom Hill, not Mushroom Hills. And to be honest, this is one of my favorites. I don't mind the gimmicks, mushroom hopping is fun, maybe a little derivative. I like the bosses, I like the environment, I like the vines, shit, I like nearly everything. I understand some people have a problem with Seesaw, but I didn't think it was the worst, because it allowed you to go fast, because if you time your button presses properly, you can go decently fast, or you don't, then you're slow of course. So yeah, really great zone, especially loved it when the season changes in second act. And finally, this is my favorite zone, 
Lava Reef is so fucking dope. No annoying gimmicks, good secrets, a fantastic second act. There's nothing I can say, it's just super good. But, there's a big but, there was a simple overlook in this level. At this section in the game, there are no walls to climb up, yet I still found myself stuck here as Knuckles. And you can't jump up the platforms. Solution? Well, you gotta get hit by a spike to bounce you on top of the platform so they can make it up. It sounds like no biggie, but it took me forever to figure this out. I spent so long trying to glide or climb when I really just had to cheapskate my way up there. Really disappointing from a great level. But since we're talking about my favorites, I want to talk about my favorite act in the game. Sky Sanctuary. This level is phenomenal. Just, just go play it. Now, that was just my good section. Now it's time to go to the levels I didn't have a good time with. And I think I'm with the public here, but Marble Garden can suck my left nut. This level is supposed to be if Marble Zone and Hilltop Zone had a baby. And that baby hit Tourette's. I didn't bring this up in my last levels, but these levels are way bigger than in Sonic 2. Sonic 2, each playthrough, I'd get around two zones done, but here I normally only did one. And Hydrocity was a large stage, which isn't inherently bad because it's still pretty linear. The same cannot be said for Marble Garden. And the issue is this thing. This thing right here. This thing is going to be the absolute worst thing in Classic Sonic. This platform is atrocious. Now in the footage you guys are watching, this is my third playthrough. That is because I record my run for Marble Garden, Carnival Night, and Ice Cap Zone three times. Because twice my run got messed up from either corruption or audio imbalances. But let me tell you, my first run took me 40 minutes to beat a single zone. That is absolutely ridiculous, and that is because everything looks the same. But another reason these deplorable platforms are awful is because certain walls are required to break them with that spinny thing. And the moment you jump off, it disappears, which means you can't go all the way back to where it spawned, just so you can go all the way back to the top. And controlling this thing is a pain. Sometimes it falls super fast, and other times it doesn't. Sometimes it travels along the floor super fast, other times it doesn't. It's never consistent. But to be fair, the other gimmicks aren't the worst. The blue spinny thingy is fine, and the hanging wire is also, again, fine. But the enemy placement is just horrendous. And these huge spikes orbs just instantly transmission out of nowhere. But at least the Act 1 boss is fine. And the Act 2 boss for Knuckles is whatever. But the one for Sonic? Awful. Just awful. What you're meant to do is hit the bottom of Eggman with the top of Tails, which I had no clue about. I just thought you were meant to survive. And there are many issues with this. For one, Eggman is faster than Tails. Two, the hitbox of our characters in Eggman's weak spot are way off. Oftentimes it looked like I was perfectly lined up just to get hit. And also, guess what? You die in one hit. But to top it all off, this stupid fucking sound Eggman makes. Oh my god, it's so frustrating. I just... It's, it's enough of the stage right now. Carnival Night is a fucking huge ass annoying goddamn mess. Just like in Marble Garden. This stage is huge, but this time seizure inducing also. Hey, fun fact. Many people had seizures playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles because of two things. Hypersonic and, you guessed it, Carnival Night. Yay! But I guess this level is better than Marble Garden. And if you thought the last stage was long, and all my playthroughs together, I had four timeouts. Did you hear that? Four timeouts in the Sonic game, that is ridiculous. But I will say, I was exploring to try to get the secret rings in both stages, which thus makes the stage longer. Obviously, this stage is inspired by Casino Night, but here they wanted the color and gimmicks. But first, let me cover the good the zone has, because it is fun at times. First, the balloons. Oh my god, the balloons. The balloons are one of the greatest gimmicks in this game. Because if you're good at it, it keeps your momentum up, but if you need to slow down and be more precise, it allows for that. And also, it makes for cool hidden areas for power-ups and hidden rings possible. And, uh, the cannons return from both Oil Ocean and Donkey Kong Country, respectively. But that's really it. The stage has a lot to it, and what it fills the level with isn't very fun. But undisputably, the most annoying gimmicks in this game are the Magic Cylinders of DEATH! If you don't know, this game's absolute horseshit for a mechanic is seemingly based on momentum because it dips when you jump on slash off it. But it's really based on your button presses. And to really help add to this disaster, and Sega thought it was a great idea to force the player to figure it out when they lock you in a room that you can't escape unless you understand how it works. Just boom. The stage is way too much. Too many visuals, colors, mechanics, shit. They even added water on the second act for no reason. And even though the music's good, it sounds like a circus theme to me. So after a point of being lost in the stage, it just feels like the game is taunting me, just egging me on, which really pisses you off. But I will say, the bosses aren't awful. Act 1 is just kind of weird, and then Act 2 was alright for Sonic, and non-existent for Knuckles. Now here is where I'm about to piss on a lot of people's graves. I got a few comments saying that this is one of their favorite zones ever, but my opinion, Launch base zone is not good, and here's why. 
Like, look at this. You cannot tell me that this entire series of events and tell me that's fair. For one, the enemy placement isn't good. These frogs are unreactable when going fast, and the infamous spiked orb returns yet again. Yes, I understand you can use insta shield on these guys, but if you're traveling at mock speeds, that is impossible. Also, this isn't a real issue, but the stage is just ugly. Yellow and purple, like really? Yellow and purple is very ugly. And these next two issues go hand in hand. Those being the hugeness of the level and the gimmicks. The gimmicks in a vacuum are good, but when you add that, it punishes you for either messing up or falling off. Or shit, I even got soft lock in my playthrough because I got past this and hit the switch and then fell off, which will happen to you. Then I had to kill myself just so the level would reset. I'm not saying it's the worst because Act 2 is decent and the bosses for Sonic and Knuckles are pretty decent. In fact, it's really good, but Act 1 is deplorable in my opinion. Back to back, I know people will adore this level, so let's cover Act 1, shall we? Which soon into the level, you are hit with these hamster cages that some people don't mind. I just think they're a little bit annoying. But then we are immediately hit with this absolute stupid section that involves moving platforms and orbs. But at least we get to see Knuckles stick his tongue out. Oh, so cute. Then you get to the top of the ship where we gotta deal with these pull swings, which you think you go left or right based off your button timing. Like, you know, a normal game would. But no, you just hold a direction and then jump. Like, just why do that? Then I got stuck for like 10 minutes until out of blind luck, I figured out the bomb broke the floor. Like, what the fuck? How am I supposed to figure that out? But even then, the second act introduces the stupid ass electricity and these god awful screw platforms. And the second act, I got crushed so many times. And the boss is alright. I find it funny that they forgot to replace Eggman with the Egg Robot in Knuckles Campaign, which I did run into a few technical issues in this game. That also being I got soft lock in a few sections, but also again in Knuckles Campaign, where I literally couldn't get past this part. Like, how does nobody talk about that aspect in particular? And uh, and that's it. Sendopolis and Death Egg Zone. I mean, they're fine. But as you can see, quality control in this game is non-existent. I found myself loving, then hating, then loving, then going back to meh on this game in the end. Yes, many levels are enjoyable, but I just don't enjoy them all as a whole. I know a lot of people are going to give me shit for that take and say I'm stupid Gen Z who doesn't love retro games, but I mean, that's just blatantly not true. But hey, your opinions are free for you to have. Now let's end this video on a high note, shall we? So really, this game does really add a lot to the formula, which I covered in my three coolism section. But I mean, there's so much to like here. The entirety of getting emeralds is actually enjoyable, and the visuals and music really enhance the game to a degree that the previous ones didn't reach. I really did enjoy most of my time with this game. All the stage, transitions, and differences between each act were fantastic. And honest to god, in platformers like this, adding new characters helps increase replayability, which Sonic is all about. Just look at Mega Man X4 as an example. And Sonic 3 Knuckles has replayability in spades. Each character, route, special ring, and I know I'll complain about the size of each level, but if you want to dive into this game, there's so much to sink your teeth into. Another added benefit of this is the reward you get for exploring. In the previous games, exploring didn't do much for the player, but here you get rewarded with shields and secret rings. But you know, there isn't much upsides I can say about this game that others haven't. But what I can talk about is my negative experiences I, that I did have with these stages that I don't hear anyone else talk about. Again, I don't want to make it seem like I had a bad time, but I just there's too many issues I couldn't glance over. I didn't appreciate the stage size and length. The overlooks when it comes to playthroughs such as softlocks, especially my Knuckles playthrough, were just not good from a production standpoint. And god, some of the obstacles were a headache for me to go through. So let me just end with my parting thoughts. Overall, this game was and still is a sight to behold. The scale of the game must still be admired. Although this giant mountain of hype has many cracks in it. This is a great game. This is the one of the greatest games of this generation. But I just do think I prefer Sonic 2 over this game. I know this can piss a lot of people off, but that's how I feel. So I'm going to end with that. So next, I'm taking down a game I'm heavily anticipating. Sonic Adventure. Which sadly, this video took... Which, sadly, this video took forever to come out, so my playthrough for that game is nearly done. And the time of this release, I will be streaming my playthrough of the final section tomorrow on YouTube, so be sure to check it out. And with that being said, I hope some of you stay for my thoughts and review for Sonic Adventure, although some of you probably were pissed off, but I already know I love Sonic Adventure. So with that being said, I hope you, I see you beautiful fellow and fellow what's next time. Peace.